when we see youths who have scars on their arms or you know with tattoos and they're always hanging out in a void deck, if they have a warm family to go back to, why would they be out there? Every day in Singapore, a team of social workers works tirelessly to help at-risk youth. Troubled teenage boys whose futures and even lives hang in the balance. There's an implicit threat of suicide. They're not emotionally stable and they put themselves in danger of harming yeah. themselves. And so that's where we need to step in decisively yeah. as social workers. Huh? The team works at Boys Town, an institution dedicated to helping at-risk youths across the country. Boys between 10 and 21 years old are sent here for different reasons. But they are all deeply troubled. Some amount of caning will be given to you. I think it's no more than six strokes of the cane. My case is assaulting a robbery. So I follow my friends and do some robbery and whack. Ah. So my family is not supporting me. Ah. My mother is not there for me. So I have to do something about it. Ah. Many are sent here by families who have no one else to turn to. All my families against me, my friends. In fact, my sister-in-law was telling me that I'm a bad mother. There is no way I can get a place to stay. My two children, my belongings, there's so many things that I have to hold on. You are not happy. I'm neutral. You are crying now. I'm not crying. For a year, we follow the lives of four young men from Boys Town, each at a major crossroad, each at war with his past, each struggling to find a future. This is their story. Most of us haven't heard of Boys Town. Hidden on a hill in the west of Singapore, it is a shelter for victims of child abuse. A home for youths from troubled and poor families. A rehabilitation facility for teens with behavioural issues. Look at your dog. You see your standard at the corner? Look, look. Where is the gap? Okay, now I'm going to punish the whole dog. The non-profit organization is run like a military camp with a team that closely monitors every boy here. I want you to take watermelon, you never ask for permission. No, 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 you did not forget. You did it deliberately. This is not your first time. Some of the boys are victims of abuse or neglect and sent here under child protection orders. A few are admitted under court orders for rehabilitation. Many are beyond parental control and signed in by their legal guardians. Working with them is a demanding job. The only reason that we are here is because of certain circumstances. Let me ask you, without education, how are we going to break from this cycle? Don't end up like me and after that you guys want to struggle. It's very common People my age, we will always say, last time uh, our parents asked us to study, we don't want to study. It's always like that, you know. It's always like that. Failing in school has been the start of many journeys to Boys Town, as it was for Gabriel. The 16-year-old has been here for four years, and he has long grown accustomed to the way of life. Twice a month, Boys Town sends boys home to spend a weekend with their families, so they can stay connected with their loved ones. For Gabriel, it is a chance to escape into his love of gaming. His parents divorced a few months ago. The teenager, together with his father and sister, had to find a new home quickly. There is no way I can get a place to stay. My two children, my belongings, they so Many things that I have to hold on. Very soon, I left two days of 24 hours for me to move on my thing. There is no place for me. To, no place for me to stay. 
when he's a kid, he's quite playful and outspoken. As he grew up, he became quieter and quieter. La. When he's home, he would normally only play games. Like from the time he wake up, right, he would just brush his teeth, then he start playing games until at night. Yeah. Recently, Gabriel has been playing games until midnight, like to 3 a.m., which is quite worrying. Worried about her younger brother's gaming habits, Samantha contacts Boys Town. Adrian, a senior staff member, is so concerned, she comes to see him and find out what's going on. What did mother decide to do? Mm. Yes, uh, stay with her friends. Huh? Okay, so mother moved out to stay with her friends and then left your two behind. Mm. After the flat was sold, uh, I went to... My, my father asked the HDB for a rental flat. Huh? Okay. And then mom continued living outside. No, she lived with her friend. Okay. And uh, I stay with my father and my sister in a rental flat. How big is this rental flat? Very small. Okay. Compared to the previous house? Hmm? Yeah, it's very small. Very small. Two rooms. Okay. One kitchen. Uh, one is for me. One is for uh, like another family. Uh. So you are sharing your that rental flat with another family? Yes. Ah, that makes a lot of difference, you know. So, in other words, one room belongs to the three of you. Yes. Maybe a glue to your computer, because there's number one no space in the house, and there are all these foreigners that are not staying with you. So you go into the computer to escape. Plus your board. <laughs> so which is it? Both. Both, ah. Okay. Gabriel is trying to deal with his troubles by withdrawing from the world. Others are in Boys Town for lashing out at life. Q over 4x plus equal to 1 over 2 plus 6. I barely tell people I'm in Boys Town because I know what society thinks of this place. I thought Boys Town was like, uh, how you say, it was just some place all the bad people go. Because I always had this misconception that Boys Town was Boys Home. I kept thinking that it was like a prison, a yeah, for yeah, juveniles. If Gavin's parents had not signed him into Boys Town, he would most likely have ended up with a criminal record. My parents used to hire me for me since like primary one, so I was relatively very lazy. At first that laziness was from basic things like waking up early for school. From then it gradually moved all the way to uh, everything I do. Gavin's disinterest in studies made him an easy target when he entered his secondary school. After over a year of delinquency, he was on the verge of joining a gang. I knew what I was doing. I knew, I knew the consequences, but I didn't care. Gavin's parents were helpless in changing his ways. When he got a tattoo secretly on his 14th birthday, they were desperate. I couldn't forgive myself because of what he did to, with his tattoos. Yeah, it really broke my heart. I mean, I'm so disappointed as a mother. I, I, I feel that I'm, uh, I'm not a good mother for him. Gavin's parents found Boys Town online when they were searching for help. After a visit, they were immediately convinced. Boys Town is not only a new beginning for the boys, but also a sanctuary for parents, where judgment from society ceases. All my families against me, my friends, especially my in-laws. In fact, my sister-in-law was telling me that I'm a bad mother because she herself was telling me that I will never put my own children in this kind of place. So imagine the hostilities that I have to face with especially during the family gathering. For many families, Boys Town is their last resort. 
because boys are segregated indefinitely from their loved ones and mainstream society. Once admitted, most of the boys can still attend public schools. But a select few, like Gavin, are cut off from the world outside as part of their rehabilitation. So they must study on premises. Gavin's been in Boys Town for half a year. He longs to return to life on the outside, but his parents are not certain if he's ready. Only time will tell. For me, the most important thing is like, yeah, it doesn't really matter how you come in. It matters how you come out. Just in here, Uncle. Sorry, sir, will I do it? Sir, may I do it? Oh, okay, which charity is this for? Uh, this uh, is for the funding of uh, Boys Home, okay. which is a uh, home for uh, those who... youth at risk, basically, yeah. Gavin is one of over 60 boys currently living in a little-known institution in Singapore. Boys Town is a refuge for children who are victims of abuse. It is a sanctuary for boys with no families to turn to. And it offers rehabilitation for teens struggling with behavioral issues. While some of them are legally bound to be here, the rest can be signed out upon their parents' wishes. After seven months in Boys Town, this is what Gavin wants more than anything. He longs to return to his former secondary school and be reunited with his friends there. Gavin's social worker is working with him to prepare for his discharge. Gavin, uh, I really, 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 really want him to leave. And then she was like, so we have to make up a goal. Because without a goal setting or without anything to support you, how, like, it's very hard to, uh, she came up with this very smart idea. They come up with a way to help him with routines that he struggles with. Hopefully, this will convince his parents that he's ready. In order to go back, I need to uh, have the same page with my parents. So, uh, in a way, I need to throw away that anti-socialness and like, yeah, talk to them. During his bi-monthly weekend at home, the 14-year-old musters the strength to initiate a chat about leaving Boys Town. It isn't long before the old tensions surface. So when you gonna come out? Uh, no, I don't know. Nobody wants to hear when you gonna come out. No. Uh, that's a big question mark. Huh? No, it's not a question mark. Even you know, you are in control. Stop okay. wasting your time, Gavin. Time flies very fast. Why is so difficult for you to just like go to school, come home? You know, do your part. Why is holding you back? Uh, yeah. huh? See, where every time we talk like this, you always like, why is holding you back? I, know, I, I think. I don't like talking. Huh? So, what do you want us to do? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. The main reason why I didn't like to bring out the topic was because every time I bring out a topic, their face always changes. In, they always look so pale. That, that, that disappointed face, like you just like <laughs> lost a million dollars. At the moment, he doesn't know what he wants yet. So, no point you push him. No, I'm not pushing him, I'm asking him. Because he don't tell us, then how do we know? We, do, we cannot guess your mind that gave him. <sighs> He's uh, holding back something. Are you happy? I don't know. You are not happy. I'm neutral. You are crying now. I'm You're crying. crying. I'm neutral. You understand what's neutral? You want me to describe the word? It means I don't know. I'm blur. They keep asking me, you know. So I, it becomes more of a pressuring factor than a asking factor. So I was just, yeah, I was just angry because of that. So just let him be what he wants to be, that's all. But don't blame us, that's all. Period. You don't see your boat. Uh, whatever floats your boat, no? You never see a box of wood. I don't see anything. What? Do I don't see anything. What? No, when? But I don't see anything. So you're angry with us, 
Oh my god, I just don't like you. See, you don't like us? Yeah. Never did. You never yeah. like us? Don't you, right? Gavin's apparent indecision and refusal to admit his mistakes leave his father unconvinced that he's changed. If he tends to realize his mistake and change in a year's time or two years time, probably there's hope for him to have a better future. You know, but if he goes on like that for maybe five, six years, then I think it's, it's going to be hopeless for him. Gavin and his parents struggle to heal the wounds between them. But you don't need to be at war with your parents to wind up in Boys Town. Across the city, Francisco, another Boys Town teenager, is spending a weekend at home. His widowed mother works two jobs seven days a week. Francisco feels lucky to have some family time. This is supposed to be our bed, but then we actually sleep outside at the hall. I will take the orange one over there. My brother sometimes sleep here, my mother sometimes sleep here, then they both alternate. Ah. Well, I live with my younger brother and my mom and two tenants. One tenant is from my mother workplace, working in McDonald's, and uh, the other one is from, I don't know where. Francisco's mother has been raising her sons alone for the past eight years. Most of her waking hours are spent making ends meet. Francisco's 15-year-old brother has also started working. With barely any time at home, parenting has been a challenge. When they're young time, they're very cute and they never get trouble. We were very, very close. Like, we be like the brothers who cannot be separated. After my father passed, it's been really hard for us. Then after that, Francisco lost memory. The mem because his father very close to him. That's when everything started. He joined the bad company and all that. Last time, uh, I into gangsterism. I used to take drugs last time. Uh, I used to mix with all kind of funny, funny friends. Uh. Uh, my case is assaulting a robbery. So I follow my friends and do some robbery and whack. Uh. And seven months later, I get catch. Francisco was let off with a warning but he had to complete a six-month police guidance program in Boys Town. He stayed on thereafter, and it was a promise of a new beginning for the then 16-year-old. But his old ways have since come back to haunt him, especially on weekends. He'll be coming home, then eat. He'll be going down drinking with his friends. Then when he came back, he'll be drunk. Same thing every time. Of course, I'm worried when she's coming back home. Because they're influencing uh, what the plan will call him. Oh, now you come back home already. Oh, now you are free. With just months to go before he graduates from Boys Town, Francisco doesn't appear to be ready. <laughs> The fear of him being led astray weighs on his mother's mind, but a solution doesn't seem in sight. I don't blame him. When she go out with a friend, I don't blame him. I have to blame myself. Why I blame myself? Because I'm not strong enough for them. Francisco struggled with the mainstream secondary curriculum until he was transferred to an alternative education institute. Uh, now in Assumption Public School, I'm taking a uh, desktop publishing and design course for two years. So I learned uh, a lot of things like doing magazine cover, uh, photo montage, bookmark design, photo frame design and many more. I see stick over. I see stick over, thank you. I will Besides his encouraging performance in school, Francisco's emerging leadership skills have also not gone unnoticed. He's recently been made an IC, assisting Boys Town staff with daily routines.
Leadership camp two is going to be up the intensity. If the going is tough and the pressure is on, if the reserves of strength have been drained and the summit is still not in sight, then the quality to seek in a person is neither great strength nor quickness of hand. Francisco has been handpicked and groomed for a year-long leadership course. His future is looking up. But during the school holidays, he fails to report back for a leadership training camp. And he's not the only one missing. Break yourself into three groups, and then you will search for... If I were a man and you know, I were to run away from the authorities, the first place I'll do is get a bus and go home. This morning, another boy has absconded from the premises. He's been missing from program today um, since 4 p.m. He was actually disrupting the tuition session when he'd gotten an offense report. Today was the discipline committee, so we were going to decide on whether there will be any consequences for his action. Um, I'm not sure whether that's the reason. The missing boy's social worker and the Boys Town staff are worried about his safety. They also know that should he return safe and sound, they will have to punish him. But opinions are divided on how to do that. What do we want to do with him? Do we say that here, here's another stack of consequences for you, and then that gives you a longer time to go home? Yes, he needs to know the seriousness behind it. But that doesn't mean that we can't give him that leeway to say, hey, let's start fresh again. Yeah, but I want to see effort. I want to see effort in me. He's not going to put a lot of effort. You know him, he's a quiet boy. Then but what if, guarantee do we have uh, that if we give him this, this deal, right? Make this deal that he won't run away again. What the message no. does he send to the rest of the boys who have intentions? Change and Peter. There is a lot riding on finding the right solutions. As a non-governmental organization, Boys Town relies primarily on public donations. A single incident can devastate public trust and a reputation forged over decades. At the moment, the whereabouts of Francisco and the other boy are still unknown. And the management can only pray and hope that they will return. At Boys Town, dozens of at-risk youths and disadvantaged teenagers live together. Conflict is routine, misconduct is common, and violence is unsurprising. Mr. was reported to have assaulted another boy in his room. Okay. Um, it's a kick, visible enough and hard enough for the boy to feel some amount of uh, pain. Week after week, the discipline committee at Boys Town must deal with an array of misdemeanors. Okay, uh, it's a repeated offence. Yeah. So I would give him two days yeah. of detention. Okay. I have no intention to give him any caning because yeah. uh, I don't see any learning point in this kind of it. Today, they must confront a runaway. A few days after his disappearance, the missing boy has returned. We play a fool a bit. Huh? Then they complain, but I thought that I got offence report for nothing, punished for nothing. So you thought that there, there will be an offence report written out on you for your misbehaviour during tuition time now? Yeah. Francisco's up next. Like most runaways, he has come back after only a few days. Are you in your final year? Yes. And how many more months to go? Uh, five months or six months. The staff are baffled. Francisco was a rising star. Why did he run away and ruin his record? I went to Malaysia and found my friends. I went with my friend, the name is Gurgel, and we went to a house at Malaysia at JB. And just because of that, you're going to lose your five months, six months of study, getting a certificate, a full certificate that you have completed your education just because of work. Francisco wanted to leave Boys Town to earn his own keep and train full time with a sports club. But now his reckless disappearance casts doubts on whether he will graduate at the end of the year. You can see your social workers and we can talk about it. 
But now that you have made the effort to come back, all right, there are some consequences that comes with it because of your irresponsible behavior. Now, I'm expecting you to pay for your absenteeism from this course. You'll be deducted off from your pocket money. It's four days detention. Right? Some amount of caning will be given to you. I think it's no more than six strokes of the cane. The team at Boys Town do their best to set their troubled young charges on the right path. But once they are released into the world, even top graduates face uncertain futures. Yeah, it should be a big day. Yeah. Because I'm going to collect my result and it's going to affect my decision in my future. Best case scenario is that I get 9 points and I'm able to get into my course, which is psychology. Because to me, I, being a psychology, I also want to change people's life, inspire people. Ah. I will complete my university by age of 25, if everything goes smooth. Then five years of working, age of 30, my, uh, my grade. <laughs> Richard's life seems full of promise. He recently completed his secondary education and graduated from Boys Town after winning the Boy of the Year award. An especially impressive achievement for a 17-year-old with a lot on his plate. He is estranged from his mother and struggles financially to support himself. He wants to go to a polytechnic and become a psychologist. Everything is riding on his O-level results. Wow, okay. Okay, Richard, your results, then have a look. Uh, you know, you have a look. Uh, wow. Also, uh. I can see it's better so than I feel one. Uh. Yeah, wow. Wow. English 7, uh, yeah. one okay. Uh, I saw the E8. Uh, okay. It was horrible. Uh. If I really feel one, I just, that's, I mean, I can't go poly. Uh. Richard is devastated by his poor grades, but he has got to pull himself together. His evening shift at a retail outlet starts in two hours. Gavin is also wrestling with life after Boys Town. He barely slept last night thinking about what his parents have decided for him. They just brought up the topic about leaving. I was very surprised. Very, very, very. I just kept thinking in my mind, what's happening? There must be a motive behind this. Nothing comes for free. After talking it over with his social worker, Gavin's parents are ready for him to return home. He will go through a transitional phase of living at home during the week and spending weekends at Boys Town. And he has mixed feelings. I have to adapt to the fact that I'll be at home every day. There's no such thing as home lead FFA, DOs, offense report, whatever. It's all me and, and like, it's just all on me, you know. Gavin is bracing himself as he returns to his secondary school during the second semester. He has been gone for a year. I'm worried about how I'm going to adapt back to school. I'm, am I going to adapt back to society? Oh my god, you are back. <laughs> Welcome back, Gavin. You know where the class is? Yeah. Ground floor. Same one. Right. Same yeah. Nothing's going? Okay, <laughs> what are you doing here? Studying now. Uh, yeah, yeah. When people know quite a lot, you ask too much. Then like, it will be very complicating. So the best if like, you don't know what happened, then I won't tell, then like, it remains easy, no questions asked. All we know is that we just back to school. Uh. It's okay, I'll give no trouble. Sure, yeah? Uh, yeah. Study. Study. Any issues 
Okay. Friend, I didn't know who Gavin is, now I know. Yeah, it's true. I, I, me positive, you come back. Now we have Gavin who's joining us, so can we just welcome him back to class? And he's in good study, so you better make sure that he's welcome. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Gavin. That's not a good welcoming. I hope it's not really welcoming. Why have you left? Adaptability and most like no one to say no. Yeah. Let's, let's stay on the right side because I know you have it in your ability. Okay, so welcome back. Anything? You need help? No, yeah, okay, I'll go to you. Okay. Picking up where he left off, Gavin appears to be coping well on his first day back in school. Teachers and old friends are welcoming him back, but he's also running into shadows of his past. Oh, okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> I was after my secret after that I tried to call Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Well, then like the other friends who was like start to influence me a bit, you know, like start, they start talking to me, asking me to do this, asking me to do that, you know. It's so, like, I'm worried that I might do something stupid again. I don't mind. Freedom, huh? I know. Her house got damn a lot of drinks. It's been over three months since Richard collected his O-level results. He's 18 now, and he's done with working in retail. He's found part-time work with a non-profit organization. Pad, his former social worker at Boys Town drops by to find out how he's doing. So what kind of job are you doing with social creatives? Um, assistant artist. So basically it's like I, I just help out whatever they are doing. Because I'm trying to de develop more skills for me. Uh. Okay. So I just pick up um, drawing. Uh. Things are going well for you there? At least because uh, when I work I, I don't feel stressed. Uh. Life hasn't been easy for Richard since he left Boys Town. His disappointing O-level results have left him with few options. For the past one month or two months, I've been thinking about the same question again and again and again. But there's like nothing I can really do about it. It's just... Nothing's going on. Nothing's going well. Like... I have like no school because school is starting for everyone already and I'm still working. I try like Nanyang, Nanyang Poly, Nian Poly, Republic Poly. Like I appeal, uh, but you just they tell me that I'm I'm successful. Uh, and I really like email them back again like to reconsider my application. But they just tell me no. Uh, because my family is not supporting me, uh, as in my mother is not there for me, so I have to do something about it. Uh. Richard has no contact with his mother, who is struggling with personal psychological issues. Without parental support, and confronted by a bleak future, he feels trapped in a dead-end existence. Richard can only take it a step at a time. He can retake his O-levels at the end of the year. It'll be a tough challenge, but he desperately needs a second chance. Usually, teens don't leave Boys Town until they've completed their secondary education. But Gavin's parents have decided to sign him out just nine months into his stay. Back in school, he appears to be transitioning well. But today is his 15th birthday, and it's brought back difficult memories. I'm quite sad also, because like, I remember what happened. No matter how hard you try to forget it, you can never run away from your, what you've done. A year ago, Gavin devastated his parents by getting a tattoo on his birthday. Since then, he's turned his life around but he understands how easy it is to slip back down. If I truly learn something from there, I know I not to repeat the same things I've done. Yeah. So in a way, I'm not very worried. It's just that sometimes I ask myself whether I can do it or not. 
whether I can adapt back, whether I'll do something stupid again. Temptation is always there. Like, no matter how much you try to get away, it's always there. Having fun, breaking the rule. You know that, 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 how you say, that jolt when you do something bad? That maybe that's what we want. This weekend, Richard catches up with his siblings to ask their advice. His life after Boys Town hasn't been what he had expected. At 18, he plans to postpone his military enlistment so that he can retake the O-level exams. In a family where parental guidance is largely absent, Richard has always looked to his elder brother for help, as do the rest of his siblings. He knows like what you need to do and to get from where you are to where you want to be. Being a father, like like some, some kind of father, so he actually uh, uh, asks you to think again, like what's right, what's wrong, what should you do, what should you do in early life. Richard has left Boys Town but his younger brother is still there. Their younger sister lives in a girl's home. The four elder siblings stay on their own and look out for one another. Luxury. I told you before, you don't have the luxury to actually enjoy the moment that you have because you are special kids, special family, come with special responsibility. You watch your movie, what? Hell, is it? It's not as if you are normal kids. You got the luxury to spend the time with your friend fighting back behind you. In spite of his disappointing grades, Richard is more determined than ever to pursue a university degree. Obstacles abound in Richard's world, but he is used to overcoming them. He's been working since he was 11 and has long taken care of himself. Not long after this meeting, he lands an internship at a marketing firm, and his siblings offer to support him while he concentrates on his independent studies full-time. Things are looking up. At the end of his internship, during his exit interview, he's in good spirits. I'm not really sure what I really want to do in the future. But most probably it will be something in the office environment. Yep. Because I can I can get used to it. Did you feel you were successful here? Hmm. I feel more like I learned something instead yep. of successful. Because uh, my definition of successful is I haven't reached yet. I'm still 18, so... Yeah, but yeah. The, you came here to get experience. Yeah, and it was successful. You were successful yes. in getting the experience yeah. you, you wanted. Yeah. Richard's short but fruitful time in the company has given him a sense of direction. It's his first glimpse of hope after months of uncertainty. He's always saying that now he's out. He won't come back. <laughs> oh, there's no way I can put him back. Mm. But I said, I will talk to the school <laughs> and I'll put you back. <laughs> if you feel. After so long, the moment has come for Gavin and his parents. Two and a half months after he began transitioning from Boys Town to life outside, the family is about to take the final step and bring him home for good, despite his father's misgivings. Uh, I don't see much change in him hanging his clothes, taking his bath, mm -hmm. all this we have to tell him day in, day out. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any change in that area. Mm -hmm. Attitude-wise, yes, I think he's more polite towards his mum, towards me, the way he talks and all that. How he handles people, very good in terms of like um, complaints, like misunderstandings, he can actually handle nicely. It is all boils down yeah, to him, yeah, on how he wants his life right. to be. All right. Hearing what daddy and mommy says, it tells me also that uh, you need to play your part too. So with that, I would say that uh, 
we would probably make the arrangements for a discharge at this point of time with a three to six months monitoring program once a month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. As Gavin officially embarks on a new chapter in life, seven of his peers are preparing for a similar change at a chalet in Changi. Francisco and Gabriel join other Boys Town seniors at Leavers Night. This is a rite of passage before their graduation ceremony in a few weeks. We have a bed, right? We have a bed, right? Okay, I say I'm bed. Uh, I must see you graduate, right? Okay, good, wonderful. Uh, all of you, huh? Okay. Yes, Gabriel, what does Leavers Night mean to you? Mm, to live in reality, like in the outside world. So Boys Town is not real to you? Mm. No, not. <laughs> Like the outside way is more tougher. Mm. Outside way is tougher. Uh. Why do you say that? Uh, so you must work to earn money. Mm. Okay. Two more seniors are supposed to be present, but they were expelled a few days ago for assaulting another boy. A sobering reminder to Francisco and Gabriel that they've come a long way against all odds. Uh, the things you're going to do now will then allow you to draw, express, talk at the same time. So therefore, respecting one another, hearing the person, is, will be something that we're going to do for the next 45 minutes. The teens are tasked to describe their long-term goals and aspirations on paper. These are blueprints of their dreams that they can revisit a decade later. Uh, Tanya's time will be a coach in football, then a uh, part-time makers art, and uh, we have a sexy wife, maybe three kids. Mm -hmm. We'll be staying in a big house, and inside my house we'll be having a small outdoor soccer area. We'll be teaching kids soccer this time. We'll also have a family car and a motor. <laughs> this is my future family. <laughs> in 10 years time, I'll be working as a computer engineer. <coughs> and I'll be supporting my family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, stay outside. Two weeks later, the graduating batch are about to take the final step before they leave Boys Town for good. They will be sent back into society. And contact with staff members and their friends here will be limited. It is an emotional time for everyone. As I look at the eight of you, you have all, in your own ways, struggled with your failure. And I'm very sure for you, we keep the same eyes. Something that is very difficult, but it is something that you have achieved. You made it to the finish line. 2011, my parents dropped me off in front of the old central staircase with a huge brown bag in one hand and a bill in the other. I ascended the stairs with insecurities, fear, and apprehension. And now I can proudly say that we have made it. As young men, ready to conquer the next phase of our lives. Freedom! <laughs> Today is very special. My advice to the boys who are going to leave is don't get into any trouble. There are many challenges in Boys Town that I face and it's not easy to graduate from here. I think I make my family proud. Uh, right now I'm feeling very excited uh, to leave this place and to get some freedom. I'm feeling happy and sad because uh, I will miss voice sound.